In this video, we're going to create a simple part in Onshape, a bell crank. It's a versatile design that can be built in fewer than 10 features, making it an excellent project to become familiar with the full cloud capabilities of Onshape. Now what's great about Onshape is that it runs entirely in your web browser. There's nothing to install, you simply log in and you're ready to design. The first step is to create a new document. I'll be working in the default part studio and my document's units are set to millimeters. Now if you need to change your units, simply go to the document menu. It's located to the left of the document name at the top of the screen. Select workspace units and from there you can customize units for length, angle, and mechanical properties to suit your needs. To begin a sketch, I select the front plane and activate the new sketch command. I access this quickly using the right mouse buttons in context menu. Next, I press the N key to view the sketch plane normal to the screen, and I press the P key to hide the top, right, and front planes for a cleaner workspace. Let's start sketching using the circle command. To create a circle, simply click the center point and drag outward to define the diameter. You'll be prompted to enter the diameter's value, which automatically adds a dimension. The first circle will be concentric to the origin, and I'll set its diameter to 50 millimeters. For the second circle, I'll align it horizontally to the left, the horizontal constraint is indicated by a dashed line, and then I'll set its diameter to 25 millimeters. A third circle will be sketched below, but I hit the escape key before assigning a dimension. Later, I'll add a geometric relationship to control its size. Now I want to create another circle. However, since pressing the escape key exited the command, I simply press the C key to reactivate the circle tool. I'll draw the last circle, making it concentric with the third circle, but slightly larger. I want the first two circles to also have larger concentric circles, but defined with an offset. To achieve this, I'll use the offset command. For the center circle, I'll create an offset of 12 millimeters. And for the circle on the left, I'll set the offset to 10 millimeters. Now let's add those geometric relationships. I want the diameters of the bottom circles to match those of the top left, and to do this I'll use the equal command. If I activate the command without pre-selecting anything, it becomes sticky, meaning every two entities I select will automatically be set to equal. In the sketch dialog box, you can toggle the visibility of the sketch constraints. This allows you to see and confirm the constraints have been applied to each entity you see the two equal constraints here. Let's draw some construction geometry to help better position the circles. I'll select the line tool and activate the construction option. Then I'll draw a horizontal line and an angled line connecting the centers of the circles. Using the dimension command, I'll add a few linear and an angular dimension to define their positions. Next, we'll connect the circles by drawing two lines, and as I draw each line, I'll make sure I pick up a coincident relationship at the start and a tangent and coincident relationship at the end of each line. Once these lines are drawn, I'll press the S key to bring up a customizable shortcut menu, and I'll select the three-point arc tool. I'll sketch an arc, ensuring I pick up a coincident relationship at its start and at its end. Now to make everything smooth, I'll use the tangent command to ensure tangency between the lines and the arcs on all sides. Finally, to fully define the sketch, I'll dimension the arc. Notice how the sketch changes from blue to black. This indicates the sketch is now fully defined. Now before we move on, let's touch on a few key points. Number one, Onshape offers multiple ways to access commands, including hotkeys, in-context menus, and shortcut menus. Number two, some commands behave differently depending on how you interact, whether you pre-select or post-selected geometry, or if you hit the escape key mid-command. And number three, despite running entirely in a browser and potentially on a server thousands of kilometers away, Onshape delivers amazing real-time performance. And with that in mind, Let's now turn our sketch into 3D geometry. 
We'll start by extruding the left and right circular sections of the sketch to a height of 25 millimeters. Since these two cylinders are not connected, Onshape has created two separate parts. You can see them listed in the parts list area of the interface. Next, I'll show the sketch again, and I'll extrude the large circular section to 40 millimeters, resulting in three distinct parts. Unlike traditional multi-body modeling, Onshape allows you to seamlessly share features between these parts. For example, I'll chamfer all three parts right now. Now let's extrude the center yoke area by 15 millimeters and use this extrusion to merge all the parts. To do this, I'll select the Add option and choose the Merge All option, consolidating the three parts into one unified part. We can now add fillets to the three edges where the cylinders meet the yoke. I'll drag out the size dynamically and then key in the exact dimension. We'll also include a small edge fillet around the part at 1.5 millimeters. To complete the design, I'll mirror the part to create both sides. Again, I'll ensure the Add option is selected. Pick the part and select the mirror plane, which is the flat face of the part itself. With the base shape defined, let's refine it further. For example, I'm not happy with the area where the two fillets merge. I don't like how the small fillet flares up, so I'll reorder the two fillets by dragging fillet 2 before fillet 1. Additionally, I'll edit the small fillet to include the top edges of the circular bosses. Finally, we'll add some draft to ensure this part can be cast. Using the rollback bar, I'll add a feature before the mirror with the draft command. I'll specify the neutral plane, draft angle, and taper direction, flipping it if needed. Rolling forward reveals our completed part. Now at this point, you might be wondering, how do I save my work? One of Onshape's greatest advantages is that it saves all operations automatically while you work. No save command is needed. You can view your entire activity history in the version history graph. Every action, its timestamp, and the person who made it is recorded. If you're familiar with Git-based version control, think of these actions as micro commits. And with a single click, you can bookmark the state of your document by creating a version. This snapshot is easily referenced, and you can name and describe each version for further clarity. Onshape's version control is truly frictionless. There's no need for additional servers, complex databases, or file check-in, check-out workflows. It's even forgiving of human error. Everything is recorded, and you can always return to any previous state. Okay, at this point, I think we'll add the final touches to our bell crank. I'll edit the original sketch and make some dimensional changes. By double-clicking any dimension, I can key in new values. I'll also use the final button to preview the changes on the final model before committing them. Next, I'll give the part a more descriptive name by right-clicking it in the parts list. I'll also define the material, let's say cast iron, and I'll apply a custom color for clarity. With the dimensions and properties dialed in, I'll bookmark another version. And just like that, we've created a parametric bell crank, complete with two distinct versions. To wrap this up, I'll share my bell crank with the world. Onshape sharing is as simple as Google Docs. You can share with individuals, teams, your company, or you can even make the document public. I'll choose the public option so you can search for it and explore it yourself with no software installed. Thank you for joining me in creating this bell crank. I think you'll agree Onshape makes it easy, fast, and accessible from anywhere.